Chapter 1300. Mom's flopping her butt onto our beverage cooler when I stroll past her for the basement door. I must give her a look because her face twists into challenge mode. As in, what? Haven't you ever seen someone attempting to close something by leaping into the air and smooshing it with their butt before? But neither of us actually says anything. I keep it moving, even throwing in a little random, sorry, I'm too busy working to stop and talk to you, whistle, because I have things to do. And mom keeps it flopping because clearly she's got water bottles to crush and soda cans to scrunch. Had I known she was also watching me, which I probably should have known because moms see everything, maybe I wouldn't have done the thing that sets her off again. But it's hard to say because honestly, it's what I always do. It's just that usually she's not really around to witness it. Anyway, before you try to judge me, I want you to honestly imagine what you'd do if your washer and dryer were all the way down in your cavernous basement dungeon. If you're honest, I'm sure it's a method you'd use too. So yeah, standing on the landing at the top of the stairs, I make it rain. Dirty drawers. Quickly scooping dirty sock after dirty shorts after dirty tank after dirty t-shirt, I fling all the dirty things down the beginning to peel gray painted basement stairs, each bit of clothing soaring through the air for one glorious major hang time moment before realizing they're the equivalent of a dirty laundry ostrich. Eep! We can't fly! And dropping like flies onto the already in progress, huge stinky clothing heap I've created over the four previous trips. Two reasons for this move. And no, it's not because I'm lazy. Very funny, guys. Nope. It's number one, a mega time saver. And in case you've forgotten, how much time this laundry takes is the only thing that matters in my life right now. Number two, fun. It's really fun shoveling your clothes downhill. Apparently, mom doesn't agree. How do I know this? Well, because this next parental update you're about to hear is brought to you by scream O, the revolutionary communication tool perfected over eons and relied on by parents the globe around. Because, parents, why waste precious time walking into the same room as your kid when you can just do this? Chapter 1400. When someone screams your name like this, it means one of two things. Number one, they are seriously wounded. Number two, there's a mountain lion in the house. But if you live with my mom, it means something else. Mom, what's going on? I ask, diving into the kitchen where I last saw her. But she's not in the kitchen. The beverage cooler is there, its lid still not sealed, chunks of ice melting all around it. That poor ice, casualties of mom's aerial booty assault. I bet they never saw her coming. I round the corner and see mom standing in my dirty clothes launching spot. She's got one hand on her hip and the other is pointing down the basement stairs. And as I assumed, she is not hurt, nor is there a mountain lion on the loose. Boy, I know you're not over here throwing your nasty clothes down my clean stairs onto my clean floor, she says. Well, I think she says, although her voice also has this very distinct asking quality, which I gotta say is kind of a habit of hers and a move that I still haven't quite learned how to handle. My instincts are to spout off something clever or point out that it's because of me that her basement stairs and her basement floor are clean in the first place. Those tasks, two of the many annoyingly random chores I've been forced to do during my summer of freedom. I mean, what do I have to lose, right? Um, wrong guys, majorly wrong. That was just a test to see if you'd steer me the right way and you failed miserably. Sheesh, what do I have to lose? This is my mom. You've met her already, right? What I have to lose is my whole life. 
what? You didn't know that moms are trained in the classic art of soul snatching? Well, consider yourself lucky and now warned, my friends. And thanks for nearly costing me my life too. I hook you up from the very beginning with some cool features and you hook me up with a first class ticket to bye bye Mom repeats herself. Eddie Gordon Holloway, did you hear me? I asked you a question. Ah, so it is a question. Confirmation received. No, Mom, I say as softly and as innocently as my voice will allow. I'm not. She wags her pointing down the stairs hand. So how do you explain all of this? I bat my eyes as if I'm a toddler on the first day of preschool. I meant, no, I'm not. Now, if you're asking, was I ever throwing my nasty clothes down our clean stairs onto our clean floor? Well, then, yes, I am guilty of those charges. And as I stand before you, your honor, I beg for forgiveness and throw myself at the mercy of the court as swiftly as my nasty clothes were thrown into the basement. And then squeezing my eyes closed to emphasize my willingness to accept whatever punishment she considers fair, I hit her with the ace I keep hidden up my sleeve. But Eddie, you aren't wearing a shirt. It's a figure of speech, guys. Okay, so what's the ace then? Oh, nothing much. Just my patented, super special, never fail counter move to mom's possible soul snatching attack. Yep, it's a look I call Serp Cern. And you're like, wait, Serp Cern, Eddie? Come on, man. That sounds like an energy drink. Trust me, Serp Cern is way more beneficial to your health especially if we're assuming you'd like to live deep into your teenage years. Okay, okay, you have our attention. What is Serp Cern, Eddie? Well, I'm glad you asked. Serp Cern is the single most important expression that you absolutely unequivocally must master should you wish to not only survive your tween years, but dare I say, emerge victorious from those same years. Serp cern is when you make your face look both surprised and concerned at the same time. As in, oh, wow, I'm so surprised this thing is happening to you, especially when it's related to something you asked me to do that either hmm, I failed to do entirely or per your standards did not do sufficiently. The concern is where you really earn your money, though. This is how you assure your parental figure that it is their health and best interests that are most important to you, that you hate to see them like this, afraid or sad or angry or hurt. No question, Serp Cern is the premier facial expression for all kid parent occasions. Never leave home without it. When I finally reopen my eyes, I see mom's eyes are clenched closed. And now I'm worried because this is her child. You're giving me a headache face. Eddie, you didn't want to walk down the stairs like you've got some sense. To which I want to reply, um, is this a trick question? But instead I say, what's the difference how the clothes get downstairs as long as they make it there? And no, I don't ask this question to be smart or funny, but because I genuinely don't understand the problem here. She's massaging the top corners of her face now, trying to ward off that headache, which appears to be coming in red hot. The difference is this is a mess, Eddie. You don't see that? I make a show of peering down the stairs at my clothes pile. I see that pile, yes. But mom, I got to say respectfully, if I'm going to just toss them in the washing machine in a few minutes, who cares if they sit on the basement floor, on my clean basement floor? And okay, honestly, guys, this whole insistence on the basement floor being somehow clean is baffling because while it is not dirty, no one is going to prepare a meal and then eat that meal directly off the basement floor, even immediately after I've cleaned it. So, and I should say this, 
Because in fairness to mom, while she's always run a tight ship, she's been kind of especially moody this last week. Were I to guess why, I'd say it's because she feels weird about beach bash. Other than their small wedding, there were like 20 people invited, and a few trips to the grocery store, mom hasn't really been anywhere super public with WBD, which means this is kind of the first time our neighbors and friends see her not only minus my real dad, but with WBD. So yeah, I can imagine she's a little nervous, anxious about how things might play out today. What if people judge her for marrying someone else, not even two years after dad died? Or what if they hate WBD and so then they start hating mom by association? And I understand why people might feel a kind of way about the situation. Because honestly, I do too. Babe, you ready to take off? Where are you at? WBD calls from the other side of the house. And mom gives me a look like she's deciding whether or not she's done with our conversation. But in the end, it's me who speaks first. Have fun, mom, I tell her. And I mostly really mean it. Chapter 1500. WBD takes one last long look at me, gently wagging his head with what I can only guess is deep regret as he drags our front door closed behind him and mom. But then he pauses and meets my eyes, cuffing his hands around his lips like he's about to tell me a secret. The washing machine? Yeah, I say. His hands are still shielding his mouth, even though mom is already down the driveway, standing next to her car. They always take her car, never his super special ride collecting dust under a protective covering in the garage and leans toward me. There's a quick wash cycle for a reason. He winks at me. See you sooner than later, tiger. And the door's clicking shut and he's gone. I dive onto the living room sofa and peek out the big window. Oh shoot, I say, immediately ducking back down as WBD in his way too short, bright blue shorts and way too skinny Aloha shirt, pats his pants pockets as if he's forgotten something, before swinging back toward the house, his eyes aimed right at me. I'm not entirely sure why I duck. It's not like I'm doing anything wrong. Basically, I'm watching my mom abandon me. What happened to no kid left behind? For the party of the year and the girl of my dreams, And if you think about it, they're the ones who should be ducking from me, who should be embarrassed to meet my eyes. Because if anything, they're doing me, mom's only chance at having non-mutant grandkids one day, so wrong. I mean, one day she's going to need me to take care of her. Seriously, I feel like this is something parents don't think about enough. Which is weird because mom is always going on and on about doing everything I can to make sure I have a bright future. Ha! Maybe it's her future she should be worried about. I hear mom call out. Your keys are already in the car, babe. Remember, you wanted to cool it down before we left? I inch back up toward the window and watch WBD laugh heading back toward the car while mom attempts to load her famous banana pudding into the back seat without it tipping over, which ahem, <clears throat> wouldn't even be an issue if I were in the car where I belong because that's my job. I am the protector of pudding and all other transported perishable and extremely spillable goods. It's a responsibility I don't take lightly, whether it's peach cobbler or a pan of lasagna or a ginormous bowl of sloshing soup, which, let me tell you, is no picnic. Ha, get it? No pic- you you know what, forget it. The point is, no one wants the back seat smelling like rotten bananas because the lid popped off on the ride over, least of all the human who always sits back there. Which is to say, the points of the actual point is, I should be on my way to Beach Bash. And, ugh, adults are the worst. 
chapter 1600. Let's officially add everything about this morning to the things adults slash parents don't understand list. When you're a kid, you don't get a lot of say in what happens in your day-to-day -day life. No adults are deciding, or have already decided, pretty much all of your entire life from the time you are born through, at the very least, your 18th birthday. You have to eat your vegetables before you can leave the table. You have to get all your shots so you can go to school. You have to go to school. You have to go to the party for the kid who doesn't even like you. You have to invite that kid to your party and tell them, thanks for coming with a stupid smile on your face while your mom looks on. You have to wear the outfit that you absolutely hate even though they know that it makes you look ugly, nerdy, huge, weird, like a stick insect, like a wombat, like a baby possum. You have to do your chores or risk punishment. You have to do your chores exactly how they say or risk more punishment. You have to go to bed even though you're not even slightly tired. And yes, right now, head upstairs and I don't want to hear any complaining either. You know what your bedtime is. And no, I don't care if you're wide awake, you don't have to go to sleep. Just get in bed and close your eyes and don't move or make any noise for a minimum of eight hours, okay? Wait, no kiss goodnight? I mean, are you kidding me? What gives them the right, you know? And don't say, well, Eddie, they gave birth to you. They created you. Because let's be real. Literally every human ever was made by someone. Big flippin' whoop. Who even cares about something that happens to everyone? Chapter 1700. At this point, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's a lot of dirty laundry. A lot. Like, I still stick by my plan because it's not only thoughtful, it's pretty next level. You know, if it had been allowed to continue. Shout out to the breaker of great plans who, more times than not, I just call mom. Naturally, I stuff as much laundry into the washer as humanly possible, completely ignoring mom's voice in my head, warning me of the danger. Eddie, don't overfill the washer machine unless you want it to explode and turn the basement into a swimming pool. Because, sorry mom, but one, finishing quickly is worth any risk, and two, uh, yes. I'd love an indoor all-seasons pool. Are you kidding me? I mean, we live in Ohio, otherwise known as the Buckeye State, the heartland, and the place where it's exceptionally cold nine and a half months out of 12. A heated indoor pool? Hmm. Sign me up. I press a few buttons, like mom taught me, and I turn the selector dial to normal load, which is weird, let me just say, because one, how do they expect you to know if your load is normal? And two, how does that make all the other loads feel when they're categorized as non-normal? Like, has anyone thought of that? I mean, it's bad enough we're separating clothes by colors, but now we're judging their normalcy? That's what's not normal, if you ask me. But whatevs. I flip mom's laundry binder manual to the next page. Centered, underlined, and in bold type at the top of the page is one word, detergent. And if you're like, wait, Eddie, is there really an entire section devoted to detergent? Again, have you met my mom? Of course there is. She leaves nothing to chance. It says, first locate the bottle of detergent. Hmm, sounds easy enough. I know for a fact that mom keeps the detergent in the cabinet above the basement sink. I open the cabinet and immediately my face falls because there's not a single bottle of detergent inside. No, there are a half dozen different bottles of detergent of different shapes, sizes, and colors. A quick glance at their labels and yep, they even have different scents. Pine fresh, rainy spring day, cinnamon toast with butter. Oh, okay, I made that last one up, but you see my point. How in the world am I supposed to know which bottle is the right bottle for which type of laundry? 
And I know what you're thinking. Eddie, the binder, which would make sense because it shows how to measure the amount you need for the size of wash you're loading and where to pour the detergent. But what it absolutely does not say anywhere among the 37 whole pages is which bottle. And so I ask you, how in the world do you write 37 detailed pages about how to do laundry without specifying the main laundry doing ingredient? I pull my phone out and fire off a text to her. Eddie, to mom. Hey, uh, which laundry detergent do I use? I wait for my message to say delivered, like it always does, but nothing happens. I can't even tell if it's been sent. Maybe they're in a bad reception area or something. In my head, I attempt to visualize the route we take to the beach, trying to imagine where they might be where the cell service is terrible. But my brain isn't cooperating, and I can't think past the first quarter of the trip. My eyes fall back on the shelf filled with detergent. Let's see. Maybe there's a clue on the labels. Like a hint that'll point us in the right direction. Bottle number one. Clean and fresh. New and improved detergent flow. Hmm. Clean and fresh. I definitely like the sound of that. New, not so much, because new is not always better. But speaking of better, the and improved part is a definite plus. Bottle number two. Fresh and clean feel. Improved with our best formula yet. Okay, so this is also fresh and clean, except it's specifically referring to the feel. What's clean and fresh about bottle number one then? And what does feel mean? Like it feels fresh and clean, but isn't? Or more like you're going to feel fresh and clean putting the, these clothes on when you're finished? Also, this one says improved too, but it adds best formula yet, which sounds dope. But is it their best formula because their other formulas stunk? Or are they saying, hey, you thought we were good before. Check out how amazing we are now. I check the other bottles and my fears are confirmed. They all say pretty much the same thing. But wait, maybe that's good because I can't really go wrong then, no matter which I choose. Yeah? There you go, Eddie. Now you're thinking. Ha! But then I look to the right of the detergent and I realize I'm not even close to a decision because the detergent is just the start of the laundry doing. There's also bleach, which I don't know about you, but that sounds like blood and leeches to me, as in those gross slug things that stick to your skin and suck your blood. I nearly drop the bottle. I am so disgusted. Who would name something bleach of all words? The only way it's ever okay to call something bleach is if it's the name of the person who invented the stuff. Gloria Bleach. Troy Sanderson Bleach the Fourth. Otherwise, it's a gnaw on the bleach. Plus, I know the Bronster accidentally splashed bleach on his favorite pair of jeans, and he was screaming as if he were stuck in the worst nightmare of his life, all because the bleach ruined his jeans with yellow-white streaks. A chemical reaction, WBD said as if understanding that this was science would make the bronster feel better. Wait, but bleach isn't even the end. There's fabric softener? Seriously? Is this really a thing? Why do we need our clothes softened? Is cotton not comfortable enough for you people? What are you trying to do? Make your shirt feel like lotion or something? I pass on the softener too. After double checking mom's manual, I'm finally ready to get this first load going. I smile as I mash the start button and the washer machine rumbles to life. And judging from the fact that it's shaking hard enough to jackhammer through the floor, it's possible I did overfill it just a touch. It's a front loading machine and it has one of those round windows like you see on a ship, a port window. So it's kind of cool to see the clothes sloshing around in there as water pours into the cavity from all sides, as if my dirty socks are a captured hero who's been thrown into a pit that the villain means to be their watery grave. I'm sorry, was that too dark? 
see what being in the basement does, and it's only been like five minutes. I check the washer machine because this fancy model gives you a time estimate. One hour and 15 minutes? No way. By my calculations, I have at least four loads to get through, meaning altogether, this is going to take five hours? What? No way. Nope. Beach bash will be more than half over by then. I'll miss everything. Clearly, that's not an option. So what then? Think, Eddie. Think. I study the washer machine settings more carefully until bingo. My eyes light up as I reset the machine. This time, I press quick wash like WBD suggested. My joy returns as 75 is replaced with 28 minutes, reducing my TWT, total washing time, to two hours. This still sucks because the beach is definitely calling my name, but it sucks less. Three hours less, to be exact. I'm not sure who designed this particular washing machine or if quick wash is an option on every machine, but what I do know is every now and then, when you need it the most, a little good luck rains down on you like a giant washing machine in the sky, soaking you in optimism, renewing your faith in the world. Even life knows sometimes you need to catch a break. And, okay, thanks, WBD, too for the tip or whatever. And so with a things are looking up smile on my face, I climb the two flights of stairs back to my bedroom, cannonball onto my bed and grab my controller. With a single button tap, boom, I'm back in the skies where I belong. Once again, an unstoppable dragon force breathing justice onto the earth one mouthful of fire at a time. Maybe 10 or 15 minutes later, I swear, I hear the washer machine's cycle complete chime and race into the basement only to learn it was the video game. Why do all beeps sound the same? I feel like the people who make phones, computers, video game systems, washers, and dryers would understand how important it is that all of their very different products have super different beep alerts. But apparently, when they all got together at the electronics convention to discuss their inventions, everyone was like, wait, how come your beep sounds like my beep? You got to change your beep, bro. No, no, you got to change your beep, my friend. Ha, all of you people are going to change your beeps because I called dibs first. And thinking they were all smarter than the rest of them, they promised to go back to their labs and change the sound, that it was only fair that no one gets to use that special beep. But they were all lying because they all kept it. And so now I can't even listen for my laundry's beep without wondering if it's the microwave telling me it's finished warming up a dish or the sound of my video game saving or a text coming through on my phone. And don't even get me started on TV shows, movies, and commercials these days. They use the same beeps and chimes as our real devices. It's wild. Seriously, one time a phone commercial came on and I thought I had like 15 texts, but it was the guy in the ad. There's a full 20 minutes still to go flashing on the red LED display screen. So I use that time to eat a yogurt and a handful of cashews before slipping outside and down the driveway for the mail.